Welcome back to Barca Buzz TV. Barca with a 1-0 win against Getafe just now at the Camp Nou. First game back at home in the 2023 calendar year. And it was a, a real slog, right, ladies and gentlemen? Without Ter Stegen being on, honestly, the form of his life better than I've ever seen him. This game could have easily been a draw or a loss. Could have possibly had a Dembele red card in there. You had Christensen pick up some sort of hamstring discomfort. But we get three points as league leaders, right? We're up six now, depending on how Real Madrid do against uh, Athletic Bilbao right now. And, you know, without Lewandowski, without Ronald Araujo, and without Frankie de Jong playing a single minute in this game, we come away with three points. 1-0, tighter than we want, but there is some, you know, silver lining there that, hey, at least we got the victory. This wasn't one of those traditional, you know, tight, uh, dirty La Liga games where you say, well, you have to win those games to win the league, because in this game, we were just not very good at all, right? Um, and Getafe are not a very good team, not very high on the standings, don't have a, a, a potent offense, but they, they really gave us a hard time today because the, the team was just a little bit too robotic. Um, we had, you know, Dembele and Rafinha play on the pitch, left and right wing, and again, those two did not gel as they haven't been for a few months now when they both start together. Lewandowski out, so Anzu Fati gets that front spot. And, you know, I was expecting, because we talked about after the Copa game, Fati has three goals in four games, was really expecting this to be a game where he show, you know, shined a little bit and uh, showed that he's kind of continuing his you know, long rehab and his uh, getting back to confidence. But unfortunately today, his touch was not there and his movement was not as good as I was expecting. You take a look at that first goal, right? And you have Christensen win the ball back uh, in the you know center of the pitch, gives it off to Rafinha really quick. Rafinha gives a wonderful cross and you get Pedri scoring the first and only game of the goal. And really that uh, you know, spell of play is what Barca has needed this season to succeed. It's Christensen being the surprise of the, the signings that we had this summer, just being wonderful, giving the ball quickly to Rafinha. Rafinha, again, not having a great day. Uh, there was a time when we switched Rafinha from the right side to the left side, which is where he got the assist from. But overall, he was ineffective. But hey, he's getting that assist, right? Last game, we went over how in the last 10 games, he has like three goals and six assists or so, and how he got another one today. And then Pedri scoring the goal, because we've been asking for the last few weeks here with Rafinha or with Lewandowski suspended for three games in La Liga, you know, uh, who would score goals, right? You have Ferran Torres as well suspended for this game and the next game. And so it was a big question of who will score the goals. Will Dembele finally get shooting boots on? Not really. Rafinha had a goal in the Copa, that nice curler, but wasn't able to do it today. And so Pedri was the man to step up, put the ball in the back of the net, and give us the lead. And it was scary, right? I mean, when you look at the, the fact that Christensen gets subbed off at halftime, so does Balde, and then you have Eric Garcia come on, you have Jordi Alba come on for both of them, and then, you know, almost 75th minute or so, you have Sergio Roberto come off and Marcus Alonso come on. It was uh, a sight to behold. Some of the subs in this game were a little bit head-scratching. We got some clarity, like I said, that Christensen asked to be switched out because of his injured hamstring, but the decision to take Balde off for... Um, Jordi Alba was, you know, a little bit weird. The fact that we took off Sergio Roberto uh, and we put on Marcus Alonso, also a bit weird. You know, no matter how you look at it, until Ronald Araujo's back in the team, uh, this back line never looks as good. And there were uh, quite a few moments when, uh, you know, Getafe had a good chance to shoot on goal and to, to score, right? You look at that m moment in the 40th minute or so where Pedri... Uh, just has a brain fart, passes it, you know, back to the goalie blindly, doesn't see that the Getafe player is right in the path of the pass. He gets a one-on-one, -on -one and Ter Stegen is able to save it and really, you know, help us keep this three points today. And that's what we have to be happy with. We're now, you know, six points ahead in the league. I know we've been talking a lot about how it's not just about winning these games against, you know, mid to low level La Liga teams. We really need to be striving for when we play Real Madrid, Atletico, Batiste, Real Sociedad, Manchester United, right? And so for the next two or so weeks here until we play Man U and then this coming week we play La Real in the Copa, I'm going to be trying to see, hey, does Xavi in these big games, is he going to, you know, continue our improvement? Because you have a game against Getafe again, no Lewandowski, no Frankie, no Araujo. It's not shocking to me that we had a little bit of dip in form, but what I really want to see is when we come against a La Real team who are 
almost definitely the hottest team in La Liga right now besides, you know, Barca. And even then, I think they're on a, a better current stretch of like nine or ten wins or something uh, without a loss. Is our team going to perform, right? Are we going to go back to that, you know, 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three, or 3-4-3, or, or three, three, however you want to look at this four-man midfield system that Xavi's been playing? The absence of Frankie de Jong today, as well as uh, midweek in the Copa, a little bit puzzling, although there are some rumors that Frankie might have an injury, and that's why he's not uh, you know, playing these games. But I will look to see, okay, we're coming against a La Real team that's very good, that uh, is on a really, really good form right now. Will Xavi go back to that four midfield system that works so well in the Supercopa or against Atletico Madrid? Because I'm hoping so, because... You know, Super Cup, that's a good trophy. I'm happy we got, you know, kind of uh, uh, burst the bubble of Xavi's first trophy. But the Copa del Rey, La Liga, and the Europa League are really what I'm looking for for trophies this season. And so I really do want to see Barca continue to push on in the Copa del Rey. I know some fans are, are not too happy about us playing in all three of these competitions when La Liga is that big uh, prize we want that we haven't won in three years. But the, the Copa del Rey is big for me this season, and, and La Real is going to be a hell of a fight. And so I'm excited to see what happens here uh, midweek. And against Getafe, I think you would just say that, you know, Jules Koundé, T Ter Stegen had some of the best games. I saw Busquets there won the man of the match, which was pretty surprising because I thought he had a lackluster performance, unfortunately, today. Um, and then, you know, Rafinha gets the assist, gets the stat on the, the score sheet. Dembele... And Rafinha didn't play too well together. But, you know, when Rafinha was off the pitch, Dembele, he's making a lot of runs, uh, some good passes. He had that pass to Kessier in like the 85th minute that should have been a better shot and probably put us up 2-0. But Dembele had a classic Dembele mercurial game, right, where uh, too often in the first half of the game, he's just trying to take the ball, play hero ball, not passing enough to his teammates. And then in the second half, when we got the ball out in transition a little bit more because Getafe were trying to take the ball to us and score themselves, Dembele showed you know, what he can do, right? He can wreak havoc. He can create chances like no one else on our team currently. And so it's uh, it's something we just have to strap in for, right? The Dembele roller coaster is in full effect. And I love, I love Dembele. I think he's the, you know, like I said, the one player on our team who can kind of create something out of nothing and who's constantly trying to make things happen right some of the robotic nature of this game that I spoke about you know Gavi is always going to be that workhorse who's trying to you know win balls back and just fouling defenders wherever he can he's kind of like our little Casemiro but between Gavi and Pedro and Busquets didn't really see a lot of movement between them didn't see a lot of attack in the half spaces besides uh, Pedri's goal and and so when things are robotic and when players aren't you know performing to the best of their abilities that's the thing you can count on Dembele most of the time is he's the one there who's trying to create offense, trying to push forward. And so I, I'm curious to see how Xavi uh, lines us up against La Real and against Real Sociedad, I mean, uh, and Manchester United. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you think, what lineup you prefer, you know, whether or not you're just sick of Dembele and some of his boneheaded mistakes, or if you are happy with how he's been performing lately. Rafinha, hoping he continues that run of form and keeps getting goals and assists. So, I'll let me know in the comments what you all think. Thank you so much.